A few weeks ago, I got an email from someone from TT Artisan who got in touch with me and they offered me if I would be interested to review a lens made by them. Although I've never tried any of their lenses before this, I decided to agree on reviewing this lens today. The TT Artisan's 17mm f1.4 for the FX mount. Full disclosure, they did send me a free copy of the lens. However, they didn't tell me what to say in this video, so I'm pretty much free to say whatever I want to say in this video. Okay, so let's first talk about the build quality of this lens. The lens is made fully out of metal and even the lens cap is made for metal. Visually, it has a very unique looking tapered barrel and to be honest, I have never used any lenses before this with such a unique looking barrel. Visually, the first thing that struck me is that this lens really has that vintage old school look. It does also somehow remind me of an anteater snout. Okay, let's stay back on topic here. The lens cap is a screw-on type cap and it's very light. This is also the very first time I've used a lens lens with a screw on type cap. I have to admit, I'm definitely not a fan of the screw on type cap as it's quite fiddly to use. I've definitely dropped it a few times because of how fiddly it is. I definitely prefer the normal type of caps if you ask me. On to the aperture ring and the focusing ring. Now this has to be the nicest aperture ring control I have ever tried before. It is a click type aperture ring and it is the smoothest aperture ring I've ever tried. It just gives you enough feedback to know that you've just changed your aperture value and it is seriously sublime. So kudos definitely goes to TT Artisans for making such a nice feedback aperture ring. As for the focus ring, I'd say it's really smooth and well dampened too. All in all, this lens definitely passes my standard for great build quality as it just feels really well made. Okay, so now let's talk about the specs of this lens by first looking at its optical design. This lens is built using nine elements in eight groups. It weighs around 248 grams and its focal length of 17 millimeters is roughly the equivalent focal length of 20 four millimeters on a full frame sensor. As you may already be aware, this lens is also a manual focusing lens. It has a minimum focusing distance of about 20 centimeters, which really allows the user to get super close to subjects and get that maximum background separation. This lens has a maximum widest aperture of f1.4 and it can be closed down all the way to f16. And the aperture is also, as I did mention earlier, a click based aperture. So it's really useful for photographers out there. As for the lens filter size, due to its tapered front lens element, it does spot a very awkward filter thread size of about 40.5 millimeters. As for this lens, it comes in six different mounts. Okay, so now let's talk about the usability and my experience using this lens. I guess I don't have much to say really on the usability and experience other than these few points for me. I love the size of the lens and how compact it is. I also love the fact that with this lens, you can get really close to your subjects because this really allows me to throw the background really out of focus and maximize on that bokeh of this lens. The aperture clicks on this lens has to be one of the highlights to me. It is really nice. It's just so gentle and not too notchy and super satisfying to use. If there was one real complaint for me, it would be the long focus throw. It's about 180 degrees just from infinity to the closest focusing distance. So it is not that easy to use, especially if you need to get quick focusing racks. And I find I never really enjoy lenses that have too long of a focus throw because I sometimes just want to get the focus done very quickly and sometimes that focus throw does annoy me a little, but it's definitely not a deal break in my opinion. In terms of lens flaring and chromatic aberrations, I would say this lens is pretty much average. It's not really that bad considering its price. And in terms of lens breathing too, it isn't too bad either. In terms of image quality, I would say that this lens is pretty good down in the middle and it does soften up towards the sides of the frame, but I'm not too bothered because most of my subjects are pretty much bang on in the middle. And yeah, a little bit of softness on the side doesn't really affect my pictures that much. But I guess your mileage might vary, so yeah, it really depends. In terms of bokeh, I would say that this lens has really good smooth bokeh. It's definitely not messy. It's really nice and creamy. And yeah, good background separation, especially if you get really close to the subject. And dare I say, this lens has some character as well, which is really nice to know. As for low light shooting, the f1.4 aperture on this lens really is such a commodity to have. In terms of low light shooting with this lens, I really think that this lens handles low light quite well. And it definitely beats me lugging around the EOS R5 and the 24 1.4 Mark II. Although I do have to admit, I still do prefer using full frame sensors when I'm shooting in low light as the images will always come out way cleaner and I don't really 
really have to push the ISO that high. But briefly going back to the images that this lens does render, I am seriously happy with the images that this lens manages to render. I find the bokeh is really good and it's really creamy and I really don't have any real complaints. Anyway, here are some more samples I managed to snap while I was in the city. So yeah, hope you guys like these samples. By the way, please forgive me if the video quality isn't that great because this is my first go at doing a POV video for my lens review. So shot using an Instagram 2 and if you'd like to watch that review, please click on the right hand side. For those of you who are wondering why these buildings are really old, well, this is the oldest side of Kuala Lumpur. So I love going to this part of town because it's just got so much character here. I really wish I had more time in the city that day, but everyone was waiting for me in the car, so I really couldn't take my time, so, well. Okay, so what's my conclusion after using this lens for a while now, and who do I think should really get this lens? For me, this lens will definitely suit anyone out there on a tight budget who is looking for a wide angle that can shoot in low light. In my opinion, having a combination of a wide angle lens with a really big, bright aperture is one of the best combinations that anyone can have. Because it's such a versatile focal length to work with, and the fact that you can use it in low light is just simply a bonus. I love this focal length, especially for shooting environmental portraits. It allows more of the environment in without sacrificing too much on losing that bokeh. Unlike other wide angle lenses where you have an f2.8 and you don't really get that much bokeh, especially if you want to get environmental portraits with it, you don't really get as much background separation. All in all, I think this lens is a wonderful little wide angle gem to keep with you in your bag whenever you want to be light and nimble. It definitely isn't absolutely perfect optically for certain types of shots where you need absolutely pin sharp corner to corner images. But as long as you work within its limitations, I really think that this lens is pretty good. I think the images that it renders has the qualities that I am looking for in a fun little compact, fast, wide angle lens. I can't wait to do more street shoots with this lens. Although I have to admit, I really wish that the focus throw wasn't that long because it isn't the easiest of lenses to use for street photography. Right, so that's it then. I hope that you did find this short review helpful. And if you did, please don't forget to give me a like, share and subscribe. Also, I've left links in the description down below to all the gears that I use to make these videos. And also I left a link to buy me a coffee if you'd like to buy me a coffee. Yeah, I guess that's it then. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.